I'm the director of the design school, and um, in the design school at the moment, the most uh, crucial question we are uh, working on is about the robots, the arrival of the robots, and the robots enhanced by, uh, augmented by the artificial intelligence. The role of a designer is to imagine, to draw, to represent the future, and of course, we are uh, working on representing the future with the robots. And when you deal with this question, in fact, you deal with a more important question. What does that mean to be human? And what does that mean to be human if eventually the robots will be more intelligent than we are? It's a real problematic. A little bit provocative, a little bit Controversial, what is intelligence? Of course, but this is really the issue. What does that mean to be human if the robots are more intelligent than we are? What will be your position in the world of tomorrow with all those robots? Just to introduce the talk, three elements of context. One point, the decline of morals. 50 years ago, I entered a restaurant. I was holding the hand of my mother, and I slipped on a french fry. What my mother did, she slapped me. <laughs> Sorry, mommy. She slapped me, and she taught me responsibility. You are responsible where you put your feet. And by the same time, she taught me freedom and liberty. If you are responsible where you put your feet, you can go everywhere you want. Only morals. Now, I enter a restaurant, I hold the hand of my daughter, and my daughter slips on a french fry, I have two million dollars to the honor of the restaurant. <laughs> The law has taken the seat of morals. And each time the law takes the seat of morals, we lose a bit of freedom. Second point of context, how we are enslaved to the machine, tomorrow the robots, and how we accept it. Suppose I drive my car, I am on a road of, uh, with a speed limit. I follow a car, and the car uh, before me is very slow. So I decide to accelerate to pass the car. I accelerate, and there is an unexpected event. A ball, a child, an edge person. I have my two children behind me. And I'm obliged to accelerate to avoid the accident. I accelerate a lot to avoid the accident survival instinct. I'm going to save the life of the child, the aged person, the life of my children, my life. But the robot is here, the radar is here. You've gone over the speed limit. We are totally enslaved to that, and the robot here, the radar, will tell me the rights, what is right and what is wrong. <coughs> And contrary to my own reason, the society accepts that. And we accept to be totally enslaved of this machine. Third point, what does that mean to be human? Suppose you, are, you ride a bicycle, you have an accident and you are very unlucky, you lose your hand. You go to the hospital, you go and see the surgeon, and the surgeon tells you, we're going to replace your hand, we're going to put a bionic hand. This bionic hand will uh, 
be tied, linked to your muscles and to your brain and so on. And in three months, you will be uh, able to tie up your shoes again. Are you still human? Of course you are human. Of course. In the same accident, and you are very unlucky, you lose your two legs. Very unlucky. <laughs> you go at the same hospital, to the same hospital, to the same surgeon, you're going to replace your legs with two bionic legs. Are you still human? Of course you are human. But if those two legs permit you to run faster than the Olympic champion Usain Bolt, are you still human? This is exactly how we're going to live tomorrow. So the question of human being and humanity is on the table. So we will be invaded by robot and artificial intelligence. The robots tomorrow, there will be lawyers, there will be journalists, there will be surgeons, there will be leaders of orchestra, they will be able to compose some symphony, they will be able to paint and to do artworks and so on. What is the future of human being in this context? Because the robots, they will be totally intelligent, no doubt about that. Who could imagine 40 years ago that the robots could beat the, uh, um, Olympic, the champion of chess, for example, or the champion of jeu de go, game of go? Who could imagine that? Those games was really the human intelligent embodiment. Nobody will challenge any robots in chess and game of go anymore. They will be intelligent they will be gendered. Saudi Arabia just recognized recognize the citizenship to a female robot. Really, I don't understand what is the fact to give the citizenship to a robot. But what was amazing, it's, it was a female robot, robot female. That doesn't mean that's amazing, you know. A robot is not male or female. It's a robot. We have decided to create the robots at our own image, and in a way it's normal, so we will have some robots, male, and robots, female. They will be sensible. They will be capable of emotion, because we are going to learn them to react to the context. So to have emotion, what is an emotion? It's a reaction to a context. So we will learn them of course, to react to the context. And they will be capable of love. I mean, I'm talking about sexual action, and probably they will be much more performing than we are. <laughs> I mean, the Japanese ten, 20 years ago, they, they were conceiving some robots uh, who never said no, and now there are some robots who can say no sometimes, which is much more exciting. And they will be capable to have emotion, so they will be capable to express love. As for a major part, love is a mirror of self-esteem. I love you because I do feel you love me. As my mother loves her dog, because she's totally persuaded that her dog loves her, which is totally absurd because, I mean, she never asked well, she had never any answer from her dog about that subject. So no doubt that we will be invaded, and no doubt that in a way, they are going to be more intelligent than we are. So we will have to find a new position. We will have to adapt. Yesterday, I had a funny question, you know, are you fatalist? Are you pessimistic? I'm fatalist because in matter of uh, science and in matter of technology, all that can be done will be done. Definitely. Are you pessimistic? No, I'm totally optimistic. We have to create, to imagine another way, another position. And probably the robots will never access to the field of responsibility 
No robots, I do feel, will have any state of souls about the future of human being. And the robots won't have the capacity of transcendence, of spirituality. In other words, the robots won't be able to conceive ethics, responsibility, and morals. You know the difference between morals and ethics? Morals, it's a matter of God. And if you don't believe in God, it's a matter of love. Morals make us feel sorry for those who are hungry. Ethics oblige us to feed them. Morals, it's a matter of God. Ethics, it's a matter of responsibility of human being. We have the responsibility in the world of tomorrow to try to restore the values of morals, the values of the sacred. As I told you, there is a real decline of the values of morals. We have to try to recover that. We try to restore God in a way. I'm not talking about the God of religion. I'm talking about the God of love, much more uh, general. I don't know how, but we have to do that, definitely. It's more simple about ethics. We know we have a challenge. We have to save the planet. Uh, ethics, it's a matter of humanism. You know, humanism has been uh, defined by Descartes, the French philosopher. He said, humanism, it's the responsibility of human being to put the nature at the service of human being. Very radical, to put the nature at the service of human being. And the responsibility of people are engaged in doing that. That was uh, uh, the uh, definition of Descartes. 30 years ago, the purpose was exactly the same, to put the nature at the service of human being at the conditions to protect the planet. Now we have to save the planet, which is totally different. We have to reinvent a new humanism to save the planet. And there is no chance that the robots could have this consciousness. They won't have any conscience of that, definitely. So that was said during the day, we have to produce differently, we have to consume differently, we have to share, we have to pass from a society of consumption to a society of contribution. We have to share, definitely. We have to share the cars, we have to share the washing machine, we have to share the flats, the clothes, because we have to save the resources and to save the planet. So we have to redefine the shape, the frame of humanism based on that. And really, I do feel we have to find a position between morals and ethics, because I do feel those two topics, the robots, they won't have access to those topics. And about the fact, if I am pessimistic of, or optimistic, I'm very optimistic, because we will have a Darwinian reaction or survival instinct, and I'm sure that we will be able to adapt. And by adapting, I do feel we are at the beginning of a new civilization, and I want to be part of it. I thank you very much.